joining in and thank you for your patience as well. Uh, we are just starting up now. A quick introduction about myself. I am Ashmita. I am working with MBN Beyond as of now. And uh, I am also an, uh, a B-School graduate. I've graduated from my MBA uh, just a couple of months back from IE Business School. Um, I will not be getting into my background uh, too much because that's why you're here. Uh, let me introduce you to two stellar candidates who have uh, worked with us at MB and Beyond and now are at the most coveted places. Uh, I am very excited to bring back Sanjana. Good to see you again, Sanjana. Sanjana is uh, at NCR right now at Fonti, and she is uh, she's going to tell you her story herself. But it is I love mentioning this with a GMAT of six eighty. Sanjana got into NCR in round three. So every story you have ever heard about uh, all the stereotypes, Sanjana has broken every single one of them. So it's a it's a record, and. Uh, <laughs> Speaking of uh, breaking records, it gives me immense pleasure to bring on board uh, Nandita. Hi, Nandita. Uh, so Nandita Hi. is uh, an LBS grad, and she has uh, she has achieved what I think every single B school student wants to achieve. She was the only person from LBS who got an invite, uh, who who got an offer from McKinsey, BCG, and Bill. So when we say one of the MBBs, Nandita said, why one? Why not? Why not all of them? Right? So these are the women who are going to be here. They're going to be talking to you about, of course, scholarships and a lot more. All right? So we'll, we'll uh, start off the session. But before that, let me just hand over to the both of them to talk about themselves a little bit uh, in detail. Sanjana, if, that, if we could start with you. Hi, everyone. Uh, nice to catch up. I love doing this. Ashmita was great doing this last time as well. Uh, I'm actually in college right now. I was in class like till 15 minutes ago, but uh, I'm very happy to answer any questions everyone has about INSEAD. Uh, it's been great. I think Ashmita mentioned uh, I had about six years of experience working at KPMG in India. Um, and then I decided I wanted to move and apply for my MBA. Uh, INSEAD was, of course, the dream school. And like she said, I didn't want to lose out in another year. I definitely wanted to apply. I had a GMAT score already of 680. And I said, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and apply, even if it's round three, and play my, you know, play the play my hand. And um, yeah, so I'm happy to talk to you guys about what probably went right, what went wrong, and answer any questions. Thank you, Sanjana. Nandita, if I could pass this on to you, please. Hi, thank you so much. Um, I think Ashmita has already made some very glowing introductions, but I'm Nandita Jaitley. I am currently at LBS. I'm, I just started my second year of studies a couple of weeks ago, and I'm happy to answer any questions about the whole harrowing B school application journey. Thank you so much, ladies. Uh, so we'll, we'll start off with uh, the questions that we want to address with you all, and then uh, we'll open the floor to the participants and you all can ask what you want to ask straight from the horse's mouth, right? Uh, so the first the first question that I want to ask is, uh, there's a lot of confusion around the number of scholarships and how you can figure out which scholarship fits you, you know? I think even while working with applicants, this thing keeps coming up. How do I go about scholarships? Which are the right scholarships for me? Which should I apply to? So, Nandita, if I can pass this to you, and if you can talk about how you went about choosing which scholarship to apply to, and what advice would you have for uh, people applying to these schools and how they should look at scholarships? Um, I think, I guess the most uh, crucial part to getting any scholarship is to do research. A lot of us self-select out of 
any funding activities or opportunities we might have access to because we don't try and find out enough about them or we don't apply for them thinking it, the odds are really not in our favor. Um, in my case, luckily, two of the scholarships I received were automatic scholarships, LBS grants, or LBS considers all successful applicants for. However, a third scholarship, which I didn't even expect, came after I started at LBS. So this was something that BCG um, gives to the incoming batch. It has an entire process. It's the BCG fellowship, and you can apply for it. So what may be a good takeaway is to not just stop looking for opportunities of securing funding once you've entered business school. Um, for some business schools, there are scholarships that become available in the second year of education by the school itself. So what I'd say is to always keep your eyes open, try and network with your cohort, those who've gone through the whole path before you, to find out what you're eligible for, get tips on how you can apply for them, where an application is necessary, make sure you put your best foot, off, uh, foot forward. I think that's a lot of stuff, but that's uh, basically all I'd recommend. Makes perfect sense. Sanjana, if you would like to add on something. No, I think absolutely right. There's a lot of scholarship options. Um, there are some scholarships, of course, that are available internally when you're applying to the school. So the school scholarships. And then there are some really good external ones as well, uh, you know, like Forte and a couple of the uh, government ones based on your eligibility. Uh, so you should definitely do your research to see which ones you're eligible for. Round one, right two is uh, round two is the right time to be applying even for external scholarships, if any, because by round three, those uh, those options aren't really open. Those application deadlines are shut. So I think for round two, for those applying, it's like the last time to kind of optimize and apply for the better options. I know that INSEAD, for example, has more options as well in round two, uh, like women-based and a um, lot of other options. But by round three, that becomes only diversity scholarships. So your pool of scholarships have gone down by round three. So round two is honestly the best chance uh, and do your research and try and uh, maximize as many as you can apply for. Absolutely. I think uh, one aspect that while you were talking about this, while the rounds are in question, uh, we are at round two, and it is key that if you are gunning for a scholarship, you must apply to this round. Uh, I have seen this in my school. Last year, I was one of the first people to apply to schools uh, i was i was that uh you know on it at that point of time i said i there was no way i could miss out on a scholarship and uh there was a friend of mine in the same batch uh, i was very very keen on getting her on board and ensured that she was on board she was uh, uh she was into uh, in in sports sports management so a woman in sports management already a very niche uh uh, profile unfortunately so that was one aspect why they, why they were very keen plus she was brilliant she had worked with Chelsea with Manchester United she was uh, representing Apollo Tires in India establishing I don't know if any of you are football fans or Manchester United fans but there's this entire uh, players coming to Goa situation that happened and she ran the entire show she was the one who built it so I was very keen on getting her on board but they could barely give her any scholarship, not because they didn't want to, but because simply the scholarship budget was over. So it is even with such a unique profile and brilliant academic profile. I mean, she was easily one of the best in the batch, but it was very difficult for her to get. She got she got less than half of what the rest of us got. So it is key that you apply to the scholarships in this round itself. If you are if you are applying to this round, you're still in a very good shape, right? Um, now moving on to the next questions. Uh, a lot of I think anxiety around scholarships also surrounds as to what you should show in your scholarship. What do you write about your academic achievements and your extracurriculars? Uh, how do you form the narrative? So Sanjana, if I could uh, ask you to talk a little bit about this, please. Um, I think for me, I focused on three areas. I wanted to talk about my merit, uh, which was academics. I wanted to talk about my professional experience and I wanted to talk about my personal interests. And uh, the one thing that they're looking for in the scholarship is, and that's the story we need to present, uh, is that if they were to give you this scholarship, 
what are you going to contribute in terms of you know by giving you that scholarship are you going to be make, you know having a larger impact in general what are the impact driven things you're going to do to show for sort of a return on their investment that you know if i had been given have been given a scholarship by insiad um how am i going to change other people's lives because of that contribution that has come towards me so they want to hear you say what the larger picture is which means you know why is it important for you to go to the school why is it important to get that scholarship why you deserve it from a merit professional and personal standpoint and how you will make sure that you know of getting that opportunity you're going to do something with it um so that's the storyline that i stuck with um and i think that kind of clarity is very important to bring out it can't just be i deserve it because x y z and then a list of your achievements over and over again um it has to be uh, more towards the fact that what am i going to do it's almost like you're getting money from someone and how that's going to how you're going to be using that opportunity so it's important to show that what you're going to what that opportunity that's going to be given to you is going to go towards namdita would you agree I mean, one hundred percent. Ah, I agree with what Sanjana says. Besides that, I think this is also the mindset that we should have for the entire application. Also, most often we tend to focus on this is what I'm hoping to get from the school, and not so much on how I can contribute. Because there are obviously a lot of very talented candidates who are all vying for the same spot, and especially more in scholarships because ah, uh, very few schools have unlimited. capability of funding people and a lot of people would expect or appreciate some kind of financial contribution to their education so not only is it important that you show what your strengths are what is something unique about you that sets you apart from the others uh you must go ahead and convey how you're going to contribute to the school not just in the two or one year that you're going to be there but also later on they must view you as a valued alum that they can think back to uh, when they're talking about all the great students the school has produced i think one thing i'd probably add to it is that if you have genuine financial need you should also not shy from demonstrating that need so a lot of schools understand and appreciate that an mba is a very expensive or any management education for that matter is very expensive and can be beyond the means of someone who doesn't come from the kind of financial resources that you need to pursue that education so if for instance you have worked in a sector which is not financially very lucrative feel free to add that not go so far as to show please give me money but be clear about why you would require financial help to be able to pursue the education so i think i mean like all other aspects of the business school application you shouldn't shy away from showing your vulnerabilities so they can assess you more as a person and go beyond your grades and your uh professional achievements makes perfect sense um i think somebody was talking about need based scholarships and um great nandita that you touched upon it so just adding on to that uh what in in my experience with the scholarship need based scholarships it's simply a matter of stating facts you are not um uh, you like nandita mentioned you're not saying please give me money but you are saying look i want to come to your school and this is how i'm going to be of uh, be an alum who's an asset but i can only do so if you are willing to financially support that is it it's a very it's it's very transactional very usual for this to happen when there is a need based scholarship for a reason because people do need scholarships so reinforcing that uh, as to what nandita said and i think uh, i don't remember who asked that question but whoever did if you could confirm if your question has been answered and we'll move on to the next one or we can always get back to you after this uh so now uh, this is of course with respect to one particular uh, aspect which is themselves applicants themselves writing uh, scholarships uh is there have you experienced letters of recommendations influencing scholarships or letters of recommendations for scholarship applications and what do you think are the uh, you know uh, are the aspects that should be covered in such cases nandita if i could ask you this question and sanjana please feel free to uh, drop in 
I personally have not uh, been in a position where I've experienced this firsthand. But I, uh, just thinking of it on the face of it, I think this could be something that could be valuable in the candidature as long as that's um, something that the school expects. Uh, at, the, at the risk of digressing a little bit, one thing that you can also do to bolster your chances of getting a scholarship from your dream school is if you have a scholarship from a different school. That could almost serve as a recommendation if you can use that let's say you want to go to INSEAD and you have a scholarship from another school, you can, and INSEAD hasn't offered you any financial assistance, you can use your other offer or scholarship to the application committee and show to them that there's another school that certainly sees value in my candidature to offer me financial support. Is this something you can match or if not match, even offer me some financial assistance because I'm very passionate about your school. So that in itself could be a sort of stamp of approval from another school uh, and schools will often consider these requests at least very seriously before uh, they turn you down or offer you maybe a lower amount because at the end of the day, every school wants to attract the best and the brightest. So it is in their best interest to try and poach candidates who might not be able to afford their education from a competing school. It makes perfect sense. Sanjana, if you have experienced uh, recommendation letters in this respect we can touch upon this for a bit yeah no i think i completely agree with nandita and same thing i also um i remember while a lot of people don't tell you you can negotiate with business schools once you receive your first offer um and uh, i think what worked in my favor was i did have a scholarship from another school uh and that's kind of when need based also kicks in uh need based is usually you know apart from the eligibility criteria for others um, and I know there's a question, like you said, so I'm just going to take two seconds to talk about need-based. Uh, at INSEAD, at least, the need-based scholarship application is very different from the scholarship application. Scholarship, you will be talking about, you know, why do you deserve a scholarship? Need-based, you're talking about your financial situation. To the extent you have to keep it as transparent as literally doing a workup to say how much money you have in your account, how much money is your fees, how much are your, is the cost of living you're estimating, and how much you would need to cover um, apart from probably getting from your friends and family and where the shortage lies or where that delta lies for why you would need additional scholarship or need-based scholarship. Um, so you can't just say, you know, I'm in a situation, I'm in a pickle and we can't. You have to talk through what your need is, show it with the numbers uh, and have that math ready for them to consider. And um, that's the best way to kind of negotiate. I don't think, like I said, I've also faced a situation where the recommendations uh, specifically go towards the scholarship. But having said that, your scholarship application is submitted shortly after your actual application. So it's not as if your results are already out. So it's almost as if your application is also being considered and evaluated at the same time, uh, which is why I, I wouldn't say that that might not be considered. I'm sure the value keeps getting added towards the scholarship application as well. Your, uh, now that you're talking about the transparency, I remember that I had applied for a need-based along with Merit, and I literally attached my ITRs and everything. It is your income tax returns, your entire financial uh, history is, I mean, history to, to a reasonable extent is expected. And if you're applying for need-based, completely on board with what Sanjana is saying, make sure that while you're working with your consultant, they know what, what scholarship you are applying to and be transparent with them to work out your application the best. Because by definition, need-based would mean that the person in most need of the scholarship would get the scholarship. Okay, so uh, please be cognizant of it. Please feel free to discuss with your consultant. Um, our consultants are extremely experienced with people getting through with scholarship. Sanjana got through with scholarship in R3. So anomaly. Hey, I would like to highlight that it, it is not a common thing to happen. So please do apply to R2. Uh, but there are people to help you out. So take that help. Right. All right. Um, I would have spoken to you about timeline as well. But I think we have covered the timeline aspect. Uh, uh, I will, after this, 
go from the, uh, the, the room to the participants, but I just want to ask you uh, one last question. Uh, in your experience with scholarships as well as with, you know, your batchmates coming in with scholarships, are there any particular instances that stand out? Would you like to talk to us about it in case uh, our participants here, they, they are inspired by the stories that, that you are telling us? Either Sanjana or Nandita, whoever you want to pick. Nandita, would you like to go first? So, so there's someone in my batch who is um, uh, who's pursuing formal business education for the first time. She used to serve on the British uh, Army for about 10 years. She's a mother of two kids. And why her background is relevant is because she's studying at LBS on a full scholarship with a GMAT score in uh, the 500 range. And this is something she told me in one of our first interactions. Um, she said she firmly even fell out of the average GMAT benchmark. And she had applied at a much later round as compared to other students. So perhaps what I'm trying to say is that if you are a good candidate for this school, no rules apply. The way Ashwinta started the conversation, you could be applying late. Although this is not to say to, this is not to encourage you to wait till the last moment. Your best <laughs> chance is to apply as early as possible. I started working on my application way too early. And I also slogged at my GMAT for many, many sleepless nights because I knew I would not be able to afford a business school education unless I had some kind of financial assistance. So it's in your hands to increase your chances as much as you can by working on your entire candidate as a whole. But that said, uh, you can still get a scholarship if you're a good candidate in the school estimation. Yeah, I think I agree. Yeah, I think I agree. Um, I yeah, I don't think that there's much more. But yeah, the stories that I've had are very similar. So people from, say, the military have received substantial scholarships. But then there are also cases of, say, um, you know, somebody with a 760 that has received almost a 50% scholarship, uh, which is pretty, it's a large amount to receive. Um, it depends school to school. Uh, you have some extra scholarships as well that people, you know, like I said, the Forte one, um, there's the L'Oreal one for, I think, some of the European schools uh, where you have to do a separate application as well because you would be considered and it's a whole it's a whole other cycle. And I know people that have received those and those are also significant amounts. So uh, there are a lot of it. And I would say, I mean, obviously, to repeat the exception stories myself also, um, even with a low GMAT score, but with a pretty uh, well established, say, application, you can get a decent chunk, but it's about how you're kind of presenting your story to them. I think uh, one thing that I've got out of this conversation with you both is, uh, and this this kind of keeps coming back with the, with more and more stories that I hear, that there's no one fit formula for any of this. There's no, there are chances, there are ways to improve your odds, but it is at the end of the day the best fit that you can possibly find and for scholarships also it's not different schools are looking to fund people and they will fund those people that they want in their schools right they do not want to let you go to a competitor and that is why they are going to uh, they are they are going to fund your education partly or fully or however it may be fully is if, especially if you are applying to european schools it's extremely rare uh, U.S. a little more common, but to a large extent, also you know it is it's it's possible to position yourself and brand yourself as that particular product that the that the school needs, right? So and it's it's a combination of not just your uh, scholarship application, but also as a whole how your application is. So you have to focus on all of the issues. Uh, I would encourage you that if you are struggling with figuring out how scholarship will work or you want to see what are the opportunities, please schedule a profile evaluation call with us. Uh, it's a free evaluation that we do and you can talk to our experts. They're all from top business schools. 
you can talk to them and you can figure out which scholarship and how to, uh, to apply to and how to go about it, right? All right. Um, now we'll open this a little further to questions. Of course, scholarship related questions are extremely important. However, if you feel that you want to ask something else, please go ahead and do so as well. I would encourage you like Palkin and Shweta are currently doing to raise your hands and I will call you on board to ask your questions. Uh, Palkin and Shweta, I will just get to you in a, in a minute. I just want to ask the questions that are there on the chat, a couple of them. Uh, so Noyonika asks if there are any online databases or lists for MBA scholarships. I don't think uh, you know there's been a single MBA student, MBA aspirant who has not asked this question. So Sanjana, if you would like to tell us. <laughs> I I did a Google search as well. Even um, so, of course, like I said, the college ones are very common. That when you apply in your scholarship round, you will see the list of scholarships that you could apply for. But I would urge a lot of you to first already check out if your schools have things like Forte and L'Oreal. Those are the most popular ones that I've heard of in Europe. Uh, and third, please do go on, uh, just Google, you know, what are the scholarships for Indians going for MBA? So there are sometimes, it's not as much for, you know, it depends, there's a criteria. Sometimes it could be based on income. Sometimes it could be based on uh, whether it's a STEM course, but sometimes it might be for a master's program. Then it could be country specific as well. So if you, there are, when you Google it, you will find a list of some 10, 15 that uh, Indians can apply for. Um, and, you know, I, I think I'd applied for, I'll probably just confirm in the chat the name, but I'd applied for one of a company that was also doing it uh, in India. Uh, I know that I didn't come through because that was need-based in a sense. So I did not receive that. They do a, uh, you know, it's not a scholarship. It's basically like a rent uh, interest-free loan that they provide you sort of. For your thing so there are options like that and i found it when i did my google search so i tell you all to just start searching um and you'll find a list of 10 already in that article absolutely uh, so nanika to answer your question uh your there are resources they are a little scattered so you do have to you know google a little bit another option of course is to reach out to whoever is in touch with you from mba and beyond reach out to them and ask them for resources. We have a massive database of resources and I'm sure uh, we can we can help you out. Yeah, uh, next is, Falcon is asking, can we please cover where to apply for scholarships? Falcon, uh, I think since you've also raised your hand, if you could expand on that question a little bit, what do you mean where to apply for scholarships? Yeah, Rashmita. So uh, basically what I'm asking is, although we know and we understand that uh, the importance of applying for scholarship and then all of us do want to, but then, uh, and in particular, my question is around USB schools. Uh, so first is the, I think the merit-based and what I've heard and understood is that you cannot apply for a merit-based scholarship. It's only your application, which they consider to finally decide whether or not they want to give you a scholarship. Then second is need-based. So what is the process of a need base? Do I separately drop down a mail to adcom stating my purpose, etc.? Or if there is a specific form I can find and fill that out? That's first question on need based. And secondly, like Forte, Sanjana, and I think everybody is talking about. While I have also heard that Forte Fellowship is very common, but then how do we actually get that? Do we apply how do we apply for Forte Fellowship, right? Do we go on Forte Foundation website and find something there? I'm not aware, like how to do, how to go about the process or do we, like because I separately dropped a mail to one of the schools asking them for scholarships, but uh, yeah, they just redirected me to the college's website page saying that, you know, financial aid that I read, but that's like very generic and uh, I, I was just looking for specific segments, okay, that go here, find this form, fill this out, and this is how you apply, be it need-based, be it Forte, or be it any other. So, yeah, that's right. like where to apply. So, All right. So, two parts to your question, Falcon. Uh, Nandita, if you could take the first part, which is that where uh, is the need-based scholarship available, how to go about it, How? what is the basic process for a school's internal need-based scholarship? I think the short answer to your question 
question is you'll have to do the research yourself because um, there is no single resource where there's like, you know, there's a list of scholarships that are applicable for a particular school. It's really a hit and miss. I keep hearing about a lot of scholarships that I could have applied for when I was uh, applying for my uh, scholarships, but it's uh, it all boils down to if the school authorities, like you mentioned, are not being very helpful, you will have to go through it in a very painstaking way. Look up LinkedIn accounts for people who've gone to the school that you're applying for, see if anyone has mentioned a scholarship. If you can't find it online, just drop them a message, ask them how to apply, where to apply, because there are so many resources Unfortunately, there is no single compiled resource. There are certain need-based scholarships that are applicable to a variety of schools. So I'm not so sure about the US, but if you're applying in Europe and if it's a single year master's program, you can apply for scholarships like the Cheering Scholarship. But it's it's all very hit and miss. For instance, I don't think the Cheering Scholarship is applicable for MS in business administration. It's applicable to a bunch of other programs. So the short answer is you'll really have to maybe dedicate an entire day to first go through the financial aid, then even to search your nationality combined with MBA scholarship, read a few blogs, look up the alums of your school, reach out to them. Those who've received scholarships might have applied for others that they didn't get. Ask them if they can direct you to these resources. It's unfortunately a very painstaking job, but I think all of our lives would have been a lot easier if there was a single website where you could find a whole list of resources. I'm sorry, I can't be more helpful than that. Thanks, Nandita. Uh, Falcon, it is just adding on to what Nandita is saying. While I realize that a lot of that information of need-based scholarships seems generic, when you start with the application and you go forward with the application, things become clear only. Either you will have an essay within the application that will ask you for uh, your, your scholarship essay. You can put it there. Otherwise, it will be after acceptance. You're supposed to submit a scholarship uh, application for need-based specifically. So you will be required to do that. It might seem generic, but it seems generic because it's it's a very simple process. It's not as complicated as we imagine it to be. Uh, just follow the instructions that are there on the website. Uh, again, if you have any confusion, reach out to your consultant. Your consultant, I'm sure, has worked with scholar scholarship applications for numerous different schools, and they will be able to help you out on how to apply for which scholarship. Uh, that is particularly need based because need based are not considered automatically. The schools that you're talking, the scholarships that you're talking about, merit based, they are considered to a large extent automatically. To many, in many cases, you have to apply for it separately. But need based, you have to very specifically give information, whether before or after ac acceptance, and it is 100% there in the application. If it is not there, and if you are unable to find it, please reach out to your to anybody you're working with and ask them to guide you through the project, uh, through the process. Share your screen with them and show them uh, where you are getting stuck, all right? It is very specific for us to answer generally in this respect, right? But as far as Forte uh, and other external scholarships are concerned, Sanjana, if you would like to throw some light on how one should go about that. Um, I think for the external ones, uh, I didn't personally do it myself because I was applying in round three. But for Forte, you can go register on their website, see what the deadlines are and, you know, start the application process. I also put in in the chat the one that I had applied for. That was the KC Mahindra Scholarship. Um, so, you know, there are these external ones Do check sometimes, which is for European schools, you could also do it via the school. So the school for every round will have a list of scholarships that are, you know, active for that round. And then you see what is the and there's a little write up about what that scholarship or what's the so eligibility of it. Uh, some might be specific for women, some might be specific for certain nationalities. So you see which ones you're eligible for. And every application, uh, like Ashita said, you know, when you work with your counselors, you'll notice every application is different. I think, Palkin, you explained an example for US. Um, in my experience, 
adcoms are also the best people to guide you email them no problem they will reply to you so if you ask them for a need based uh, scholarship and they uh, guided you back to a website for need based scholarship details um then maybe that's how it is other schools they might unlock a separate application for you called the need based application so it really differs it's not the same for every college inciad will unlock a special application and the only way to have access to that is the first step is to write to the adcom and say we want um a need based scholarship or i would like some extra scholarship uh so either of the two cases um so it's school to school it's different do work with your counselors on it i'd say and the external ones uh forte for example um check if they have a tie up with your school um and also check what the deadlines are round 1 and round 2 usually but they do um so do check what the criteria is Panchala, for Forte specifically, you said that uh, I can, like, I know that they have a tie up with the school, so that's uh, sorted. The second thing is you, you said that I should go via Forte's website, right? Yeah. Uh, so if you check your no, uh, there are two ways. Sometimes what will happen is your school scholarship list will also have the Forte one. So within yeah. that, you could apply for it. So that is the thing you should probably check with the adcom uh, and apply. Got it. Okay. Thanks, Falcon. Uh, Shweta, I'm getting to you in just a minute. Uh, just want to address Vinny's question first and Sanjana, of course, this is directed towards you. Uh, what are the chances of getting a scholarship if we apply in R3 of NCR? Uh, does it make more sense to apply in the next cycle R1 if scholarship is an important criteria? Uh, <laughs> see, the chances are, I would say, of course, it's, it's uh in general in cip scholarship chances from what i had when in my time i had researched to a lesser it depends if you have the time then please feel free to apply for the next round if you don't want to take that risk there is no guarantee in whatever you take it just has to be a calculated risk if you would want to if you feel the pressure of time you would want to continue um then you should feel free to apply in round 3 uh but if you know that the scholarship is important for you and uh, you're not that confident about your application itself then you might want to consider luckily we have at nci two intake so the difference between the round 3 deadline for uh j versus the round 1 for the december one is not uh, very far away so you could consider and i think also do the profile evaluation sorry last thing if you haven't already or if you're working with the counselor do the evaluation and look at it probably from your application basis i'll be very honest for me the scholarship was not the long shot the 680 application was the long shot so in your case that might not be the case so you need to see what is the kind of risk you're willing to bear um if you're applying to multiple schools i think nandita also discussed if you could you know if one school you get a scholarship usually you can negotiate um and i would say of course uh, while they they might have fewer options it's not like there are no options so it's just really on uh, how you go about it but i know a lot of the people with me that applied in round 3 um the indian candidates especially especially uh, you know they did get some kind of scholarship so yeah just adding on to what sanjana is saying vinny uh, your application decision should be based on what your goals are and not scholarship unless it is an imperative unless you are unable to attend school if you don't have a scholarship which i'm being honest was the case with me nandita also mentioned it i would have definitely not been able to go if i did not have a scholarship unless it is that dire a situation please consider your application according to what your short term long term goals are uh, why it makes sense to do an mba right now or next year or probably you don't want to push it to next year maybe you want to push it only by 3 months and you want to attend the spring batch instead of the fall batch so make sure that you are looking at it from a holistic point of view uh if you're not sure this is something that i keep repeating some board talk to whoever it is who's who's who has got enough information whether it is our profile experts or your consultant working with you or if you are working with somebody else who you are sure will give you relevant information them okay. so please consider it from that perspective okay uh moving on to the next question shweta if you would like to come and ask your question please 
Yes, thank you so much. Uh, before jumping onto the question, I would like to thank the entire team for the session. It's been okay. immensely helpful. And uh, as for the question, I wanted to ask that um, I am planning to apply to uh, INSEED and it's not a scholarship question per se, but it's a general question directed to Sanjana Didi that um, what kind of background do you exactly come from? If you could elaborate on that uh, and explain that how was the overall process of applying to INSEED? <laughs> Um, so I come from a consulting background. I worked at KPMG for six years in India. It was tech consulting specifically. Uh, but, uh, you know, people at not just INSEAD, but any business school actually come from various backgrounds. I'm sure Nandita, Ashmita will share with you the kind of backgrounds that they had at their business school. But at my business school here in my cohort, in my class itself, I have people that come from healthcare. I have people that were doctors. I have people that were, um, uh, you know, chefs at hotels, five-star hotels in India. So I have people from all different backgrounds, not uh, some coming from core finance era, some who are just entrepreneurs, some who come from family business backgrounds. So ev all kind of backgrounds are welcome and having a diverse perspective is what is actually the best part about doing an MBA. Peer learning and learning from the people around you, their experiences, their perspectives, um, that comes through. Uh, and I think for application, I think that was the second question. Uh, that's I don't know Ashmita if you want to uh, pick that up right now or uh, at another session that's being organized whatever you it's all right Sanjana you can talk about it we can take two three minutes to talk about this okay because I saw I think in the chat somebody had a couple of questions about the application so the INSEAD application and I remember likewise uh, the LBS one is very extensive Um, it's almost like a marathon that you're running it's exhausting by the end of it because they have, I think they had six, five essay, six or eight, no, eight essay questions in the application itself. Uh, your recommenders had five questions each, which were also pretty elaborate. So there's a lot of work that goes into that. And your application is not considered complete till you do the four questions, which are impromptu video record. Like you sit in front of a laptop and a random question will pop on the screen. And uh, you can do test trials and stuff. But you get about, I think, uh, 45 seconds to pr process your thoughts and speak for a minute. And I'd say, you know, that's an equally important part of the application because it really, it's your first time on camera, the school is seeing you, how you're articulating your thoughts, how you're doing in that time. Uh, so that's like the first part of it. Once you clear that, you move on to the interviews. There are two interviews that happen with alumni. It could be in person or it could be virtual, depending on um, where they're based. So I had my first one was in person and second was online. Um, and usually that goes, you know, they they have access to your application, your CV, and they're just trying to understand. In my opinion, I think sometimes it's more challenging to have because they connect you with people that might come from similar lines as you. So it's more challenging when the alumni are themselves um, interviewing you because, you know, anybody that's joining part of their brand, I know they're also very particular and picky about it. At the end of the day, it's their brand, right? Um, so that's a that's another thing which obviously with your counselors, you must prepare for. Um, mine was not a walk in the park. I'll be very honest. Uh, usually a lot of people think or can predict how it went based on their interview I had absolutely no idea how, how mine went and I would say arguably it was probably one of the uh, probably the most unnerving interviews of my life so far and I've interviewed a ton so uh, do prepare because what they're doing is if somebody comes from a similar background as you they're asking you a lot of questions uh, they're trying to understand where you're coming from what your thoughts were how clear you are so when you're you know, we're putting your thoughts together in the application, try and be as genuine as possible because when you speak to them and when they start digging, it will, they will know what is true or false and they will know what is the clarity, why you want to do your MBA, where you want to go post your MBA. So they're not asking you technical questions, but they're really just judging how, how clear you are about what you want to do. Um, so I think that was the second part. And uh, yeah, I think once that's done, there's also the scholarship applications, which you then submit. And then you wait for the phone call. <laughs> so that's that in short. So that was, I hope, Shweta, that answered your question. Uh, that was specific to NCR. And like Sanjana mentioned, another mammoth of an application is LBS. So Nandita, if you would like to talk a little bit about that, that would be great. 
I'd much rather not think about malware applications. <laughs> but uh, maybe I think it's largely similar to what uh, Sanjana mentioned about NCI. There's lots of questions. You're um, unlike NCI, LVS just requires one recommendation. And um, there's a single interview that's always with an alum. My interview was also not the funnest. Let's just put it like that. Of all the schools that I interviewed, Is it just me or can we not hear Nandita? Yes. We can't. Uh, Nandita, if you can hear us, the there is some issue with your connection. Yes, uh, yes. My connection is really bad. Let me try reconnecting perhaps. Sure, sure. On, while Nandita reconnects, uh, I just want to highlight one aspect to you all that now schools are bringing in more and more the Kira part, which is the video assessment that happens. And of course, the uh, immense information you have to fill in. And for that, it is very important to ensure that your, uh, your entire uh, application is built in a way where your stories are coming out in the right way possible, right? The, the best way possible, okay? For this, we have, I'll, I'll just show this to you. We have a tool called uh, Mirror. And I would encourage you all that when you work with your consultants, you ensure that you are making full use of this. I'm just going to show this to you till the time Nandita is back. Okay. And if you see, for content gathering, we touch upon everything. Okay. We have your goals taken into consideration. You have different strengths that you will write. It is a deep dive into your entire application, achievements, weaknesses, everything, all right? And it is key to do this aspect because unless you are ensuring that your stories are in place, you will not be able to pick and choose what to put in your essays and more importantly, what you're going to say in your video interview, okay? Before the actual interview, in your Kira interview, because a lot of schools are using that as a filter. So please pay attention to this and ensure that at the content gathering stage, you are working extensively to bring out every single story that you possibly can. Um, in my experience, that has helped the max, the, the most in uh, charting out not just your app, uh, stories in your essays, but also in your scholarship essays. You know as a person what picture you want to present. Okay. Uh, we'll just move on to the, to the next question for a bit. Shreta, if you're uh, question has been answered? Yes, it's been answered perfectly. Thank you so much. Thank and you. all the very best. Thank you so much. Um, so Sanjana, the, the next question comes from Saloni. She says, if your school academics are excellent, college academics are above average, and you have around 2.5 to 3 years of experience, does scoring excellent in GMAT help in getting into a dream school? Or is it in vain? No, no, I think the GMAT is very important uh, because it is the most recent uh, score that you will have. And I'll be very honest, I think for me, I had very good marks in college. I had very good marks in school. Uh, but what you're doing in the GMAT is very different from what we did in school and college. You could have done science, but you're applying for an MBA. Uh, you could have done, you know, anything in school and college. To, that was probably to your strong suit. So uh, the GMAT is important, but... Uh, having said that, with a low GMAT score, and I think MBA and beyond really specializes with cases like that, um, you are able to show other sides of your application uh, to the business school or your, you know, your your profile itself to the business school, which goes above and beyond that GMAT score to overcome it. So it's not in vain. Also, a lot of schools, uh, you know, the better your GMAT score, you're also making your scholarship chances, negotiating power slightly better. So um, that's not true. And I would also say not all business schools, you know, a lot of business schools give the GMAT score a lot more weightage than they give your, or, you know, your GMAT score a lot more weightage than your school marks, etc. It is important for mm -hmm. them what your GMAT score is. Uh, INSEAD is a very lengthy application because they are holistically evaluating you. There are other schools that, you know, give the GMAT a lot of weightage also as compared to the application. So, you know, equal amounts so just about the same amount. Um, so uh, do take it seriously. It depends school to school. Um, sometimes if you only have two scholarship or two essay questions, then that third thing is the GMAT score that gets uh, tallied. 
Um, but having said that, again, I would say do if you haven't do the profile evaluation. I think there's no better place to be honest than MBA and beyond. If you are struggling with your GMAT score, have a low GMAT score, um, even motivation wise, help wise, you know, for my in my time, I remember they also helped me when I needed the help, guidance, resources. So you also get a lot of that in terms of your GMAT if you're just struggling with it. Um, and they'll be able to advise you really well based on your actual profile. Perfect. Thanks, Anjana. Uh, Nandita, if you could hear the question, would you have anything to say about how important GMAT is? Uh, considering what Salomi says is that school academics are excellent, college academics are above average, and she has 2.5 to 3 years of experience. I think GMAT is important. It's also something, one of the fewer things that are still within your control. Like you can't go back and change your college grades or you can't change where you were working the last two to three years. So provided you have the time and you think you can do better, I think I would focus on the GMAT. Personally, I did so uh, work a lot on the GMAT because my math isn't the strongest. And I ended up taking it three times, even though I started with a 710. But I knew that this is one of the few things that you can change or you can, you know, where you can give a little boost. Even if the GMAT by itself, if your school is one that doesn't give a lot of weightage to the GMAT by itself, if you push it up, it's not going to hurt anyone. It will just improve your chances. So as long as you have the time, you know you can improve your score. I think that's something I would definitely focus on. But I would also not work on my GMAT at the expense of my application. So I would definitely want to give equal weightage. Your essays and your GMAT are two things that you can immediately work on and are the most recent prior to your admission. Also, sorry about having to join from my phone. My laptop's been giving me a lot of help today. <laughs> oh, don't worry about it. Don't worry at all. Uh, love the background. And uh, I think I I am 100% in agreement with Nandita as well. Uh, while one, you know, when, when schools ask you for something, it is an important <clears throat> aspect that they are asking you, but you cannot ignore the rest of the application for it. And in, uh, I think primarily Asian cultures, we have the inclination of putting more emphasis on our scores uh, and not mm -hmm. on our person. And that's, that's, a, that's completely normal. We have, we have been in education systems that does that South Asia, East Asia, we are, we are very, uh, focused on what our marks talk about, uh, but you cannot ignore what your application has to say. So like Sanjana mentioned, please talk to uh, the expert you are in touch with so that they can tell you how to go forward with this. All right, uh, we have time for very, very few questions. Uh, you, will, you are going to receive an email after uh, this session from me you can please, if, if we don't get to your questions, which is likely because I see 15 unread messages, so so there's quite a chance that you won't get to it, but please do reach out to me uh, about your question or reach out to people you are in touch with from MB and beyond, and I will I, I assure you that we will get back to you with your answers, right? Uh, I will take it to the, uh, to the people who have raised their hands now. Shanti, if you would like to ask your question, please. <clears throat> Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks, Anjana and Nandita for doing this. Um, so Ashley asked the question, one of the questions on the chat. So do we, for the scholarships and the need-based one, so do we just mention our personal finances or do we have to include our families like finances too? How does it work? It'll be given, uh, so NCAT, for example, just give me a table, like a matrix. They okay. don't say parents, but they will ask. And yeah, there is actually that in the first page, you actually talk about what your father does, your mother does, what their incomes are, uh, what their background is, everything. So you do have to kind of, they're not vetting it, but you have to declare these things. And then when you do a, the matrix of how you plan to cover your cost of living and, stu and fees, tuition fee, uh, you do a breakup, you can split it in categories where you will get the money from and then what the delta is that you might need scholarship for. Okay, it's just because I think I can't afford it, but my parents probably can. I don't know how to like go about it. No, that's thing. absolutely fine. So usually what they do is it's not that's not the only case. There is something which is known as gifts. So if, for example, your parents are, or you want to say that your parents are only going to want 
to contribute a very minimal amount you can put that and honestly when you work work with your counselors uh, they will i know i worked with mine and we optimized it to really showcase the situation where we need i needed it not to show a best case situation and that is the advice that you will get um so uh, when you do the numbers and and the math and it's not that's not the same process for all schools so some places you might just have to write it in an essay so you can uh, work that out with your counselors and they'll be able to advise you on that very well okay and uh, any red flags that they would look for in terms of like scholarship uh, essays because um let's say like a gap in a career or like a lack of volunteering experience i've heard so many things uh, do you know could you suggest anything if there's something like that uh, your scholarship evaluation is completely different from your application evaluation usually there is a different uh, team that looks at scholarship essays to, to keep it unbiased and impaired in terms of judgment like not impaired in terms of judgment so uh, they will not be looking at the uh, the the probably the red flags or the gaps and things like that and those are things you will be addressing in your application anyway so actually the scholarship is on why you deserve the scholarship you're not going to be talking about your shortcomings and you ideally should not be in any way yeah okay and just one last question um so how do you stand out if you're like an indian engineer i know you probably get this question a lot but uh, i am a mechanical engineer it's a pretty niche field i've worked with the indian defense for the last 3 years it's purely research you know not much money i get all of that you know i i can highlight the parts but in the end it's still an indian engineer right like how do you stand out nanta you want to take that <laughs> i'm honestly just going to say book a profile evaluation you can and your background is not going to your uh, schooling or your education is not going to hold you back i know it's competitive but i think from what you've already said your background seems already very interesting and um, it's just about seeing it from a different perspective you know glass empty glass half full <laughs> so it's just about seeing the full side yeah fair enough so uh, is nanta going to answer sorry i just sure Uh, I think I'll just echo what Sanjana said. Just by means of talking to you for the last one minute, I've realized that you are probably a lot more different than a lot of Indian engineers. You're a female who's a mechanical engineer who's doing research work. I don't know any female engineers who are uh, doing research work. So I think, and we've not even scratched the surface yet. So there's probably a lot more to the things that you do, the things that drive you, and uh, the motivations that made you. pick this which is definitely non traditional for someone um so i think what's important is to realize that of all the people who probably graduated from your school in your class everyone's had a different journey since then yeah. and uh, i guess the main point is how you are able to highlight that difference and here are some of your experiences so there's no other person like shanti who's a mechanical engineer working in research and as long as you can put that across in a way that the application um the ad com can relate to mm -hmm. i think it's okay being an indian engineer sure just one last thing so you mentioned uh, bolstering your like uh, negotiating offer if you have a offer from like another school do you mean only in for like we school or any other masters programs that you have done because i have a masters in mechanical from udav and i did okay. receive scholarship there I did my four years without any. I didn't pay a penny. Can I mention that? Would that be helpful for the scholarship? I, I think, of know. course. Sorry, I I didn't mean to cut you off, but no, no, uh, okay. definitely you can use that as an evidence of the fact that you have required funds in the past to pursue the kind of quality of education you want. And uh, the example that I was uh, using earlier was very much. just before you embark on your application so people often do this and i've done it myself that when you get a scholarship from a school even if it's a lower rank school or not so reputable school you can always take that to your dream school and ask them to match the funds and that might be what uh, ends up in a change of heart so if it's something in the past i i would definitely use that in my scholarship applications at least when i say in the past also i have relied on um the schools to ensure that i can sort of chase the kind of credentials or the kind of education that i want and i would be really grateful if you can contribute to this because and then go into how you would repay the school in kind yeah. perhaps over the years or how you would be a great alum for the school 
thank you so much thank you Shanti, all the best uh, and i'm so sorry anand the teacher i know you all have questions and so do the rest of you uh, i would again request you please drop in your questions to me over the email that you get you can just reply on that uh, we will get your questions and i assure you all your questions will be answered unfortunately uh, we are out of town uh, we are out of time and, and just before we finish, I just want to uh, ensure that you all have this information. So we are closing the round two application soon, the intake that we, ha we have for round two applications and working with them. And this is why we are offering merit discounts, merit-based discounts to a few applicants. So you will, uh, from, from our team, you will get a few questions. Okay? If you have done your profile evaluation call, et cetera, you will get a few questions. We are just trying to see a fit there are no right or wrong answers. Please fill out those questions and get back to us. And we will be choosing top three of those applicants. The, the, we'll be shortlisting three of those applicants of amongst you all to receive our largest discount so far in the year. So please take advantage of this and uh, get back to us with the information. You will get the information from uh, us. You will receive an email. If you need any clarification, reply on that email or get in touch with whomsoever you are in touch with from MB and beyond. Uh, Sanjana and Nandita, I am extremely grateful for you all to have been here. It's such a pleasure talking to you all. And thank you so much for bringing your expertise uh, to our applicants. Thanks, Ashmita. Thanks, Nandita. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Good night. Good night.